So the January transfer window is upon us. We have plenty of money to spend and plenty of areas where we could do with some improvement. The window hasn't quite opened yet, but we are looking to move on one player in particular. Miguel Ramirez was a striker we signed in January of our championship season. Now, he did pretty well for us in the championship, getting six goals in 15 games, but he's found his game and time limited now that we have made it to the Premier League. We have got an offer of £12.25 million from CEC in Brazil, but it is 21k per week in terms of the wages, which is the vast majority of it. So I'm actually going to accept both offers, and I'm not really bothered which one he ends up taking. So there, the window has officially opened the board to give me the opportunity to change our season's expectations. Now, if we are to steer as a mid-table finish, we'll get 47 million quid and 1.6 million in the wages. How much does it go up for top half? Oh, it goes up by quite a bit. So we will be looking at a £60 million transfer budget and around 200k per week available. Uh, to, to 600k per week, sorry, available in the wages. I think qualifying for Europa League uh, through the league finish isn't enough of an increase. I think we're going to go for top half. So obviously our season is going pretty well so far. We currently sit in fourth in the Premier League. We're only seven points behind league leaders. Manchester City but a bad run of form could see us easily drop to the bottom 10 you know we're only six points ahead of Chelsea who currently sit in 10th so obviously results are going good but in terms of individual performances goals assists we're not actually doing that well I mean Malungu's our top goal scorer with 11 goals in 20 games and then it's Arnold Gonzalez our central midfielder with four goals in 21 games after that and our boys are contributing as a team in terms of goal scored, as you can see, a lot of players, at least 12 maybe, have scored a goal this season. And assist-wise, it's a similar situation. It's pretty spread out throughout the team. But I think in terms of this tactic and formation, you know you're not going to get the massive amount of goals or assists from any one single player. It really is a team effort. And uh, so I can't judge it too harshly. But at the same time, the average rating thing is a concern for me. We're obviously not battering teams and getting that huge average rating increase that you would usually get when you beat a team 5-0 or something. So, uh, as you can see, even some of our mainstays, Bruno Cesar, uh, Arnold Gonzalez, Malik Music, uh, Valentin Picard, are not really getting that good of average ratings. But it's got to be taken into context with the results and the leg form. And as things stand, we can be relatively content with how that is going. If we are to take a look at our squad depth, there is some glaring issues within our squad. And it's mainly at wing back, left wing back and right wing back. Are two areas where we are really struggling for quality and that is basically down to nobody really being natural in that position i mean jury schlup is the only natural player we have at wing back and he's a two and a half star three and a half star player going by my assistant manager and it's something i agree with technically he's pretty limited defensively mentally he's not that great physically he's good um but at 20 years old i hope he continues to improve but so maybe left wing back we don't really touch because unless i can find someone nice and cheap Right wing back is an area where I am considering looking to make a purchase. Malik Music is currently our starting right wing back. And whilst he's got the attributes for it, him not being natural in that position is my main concern. And even if we sign someone with lesser attributes who is natural in that position, I think I'm going to make that move. Even if it is to cost us a fair whack. Just because uh, if in, in football manager, when a player is natural in that position, they play to their attributes. Or along with all the other little connotations with consistency and stuff. When they are accomplished, they start already at, an, at a deficit in terms of that attribute. So even though he looks quite good for the role, because he's playing there as an accomplished player rather than natural, we're not seeing the full potential of Malik Music. So apart from wing-backs, I am looking to bring in another centre-half. Obviously, we play in three, so our first three are all three-star and above. Ayo David being the best of them, but beyond that, we haven't really got anyone who is great as a backup. So... If we can get someone in who's similar sort of level to Ayo David and really upgrade that first three, that improves the strength and depth naturally as long as we're not moving people on and uh, we'll be happy with that. Anywhere else though, maybe a central midfield might end up being an uh, well not really central midfield, maybe defensive midfield. Sinan Sayan is our best central midfielder and defensive midfielder and we are currently deploying him as a deep lying playmaker which isn't really his best role. So... If we are deciding a defensive midfielder, we can move Sinan Sayed up into the central midfield spots. And then we will have two really, really good central midfielders in Gonzalez and Sayan. Edward Sid, obviously 
on loan from Barcelona. He's a superb player. He's not playing particularly well, and obviously we're not playing the attacking midfielder anymore. I'm not really sure what to do with this guy. Striker, we could look to improve at striker, and I probably will look to bring in someone new to replace Miguel Ramirez. But we've got Edward Sid, who can play that. I might end up start playing him out there, actually. He would make a pretty good deep line forward, I would imagine, yeah. Him and Valentin Picard, probably. Uh, just the two best players that we've got, so I think I'm going to make that change right now. Obviously, Pickard's been a huge disappointment. 45 million quid. 45 million, three goals and four assists, even in the system that we play, you would be expecting a lot better <laughs> for your money. But it goes to show the level of quality we've been able to sign at West Brom hasn't been that great compared to previous clubs. Maybe we have just sort of bled the well dry over the past 10 years with other clubs and now we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. But so that's what we're looking for anyway. Wing backs, centre half, defensive midfielder and striker. So our first game of today's episode is a hugely disappointing nil-nil home draw against Bristol City. We dominated the game, not in terms of possession, but at least in terms of chances. And we just didn't take any. And here is our first signing of the January transfer window. It's Xavi from Barcelona B for £700,000. He's on £31,000 a week. He's a striker and he looks pretty tasty to me. There's no doubt in my mind he will come in and be one of our first choice strikers. Deep lying forwards where I anticipate playing him in. Maybe the false nine probably suits him a little bit better. And yeah, very happy to be able to get him in. So he comes into our squad as a three and a half star, four star striker, automatically making him at least on par with Valentin Picard. But I'm hoping for a lot better from this guy. He looks pretty well-rounded technically. Physically, he's, he's amazing as well, to be quite honest with you. Mentally, he's decent. Uh, let's hope he can be the answer to our goal scoring problems. We've just played Manchester City in the FA Cup third round and got beat 2 0 away from home. Stephen Finn and Cyprian Millard with the goals for them in a game we were never really a part of. Here is our next new signing, hopefully a good upgrade to our defence, Atia. He's a Brazilian centre half available for £15 million, which we're signing him for. He's 26 years old, so a little bit of a departure from the younger players that we usually sign. But I wanted someone who was already the finished article to come in and hopefully help solidify our defence. He looks fantastic as a central defender on cover. He will most likely be playing as a ball playing defender on defend, which he can definitely do in terms of his technical. The only problem is his six aggression, but I'm not too concerned about it. He looks very well rounded and I'm happy to bring him in for the measly sum of 15 million quid. And there is Miguel Ramirez leaving to join the club. Leaving to join Club Brews for a fee which could rise to 11 million quid. Not a bad uh, seal there. Replacing, essentially replacing him with a better version of him in Xavi. With uh, a 10 million pound profit. You can't complain with that. Next new face over the line. Zoran Babic from Bar Barcelona. I mean we might as well just become Barcelona's feeder team. Zoran Babic, 9 million quid. 85k per week. He's an absolutely superb. Deep line playmaker in the defensive midfield area. That will free Sayan up to play in the centre of midfield. And I think this boy is going to be something a little bit special. So let's get him over the line and hope that he can do the business for us. So he's coming in straight away as a three and a half star, three and a half star. Uh, so that does now, in terms of our squad depth, mean we've got a three and a half star, well, four star, according to me, assistant. And then Sayan can move into that central midfield role. And then we've got a really, really solid midfield three to be able to. Um, Hopefully support the strikers. So we've just suffered defeat. 1-0 away from home against Arsenal. Bernardo Enriquez with the only goal of the game 24 minutes in. And as you can see by the match stats. We were never even close to getting a point in this game. Right now this is a sign in that if I'd left West Brom and the AI made it. I'd be criticising them straight away. £7.25 million isn't the most amount of money in the world. 140 k per week is an absolutely huge amount of money he's on. But... At Lazio, he is on 250k per week. So he is taking a £110,000 per week wage drop to come and join us. He's 29 years old. He is a natural right wing back. We've finally been able to find one. And I think he's going to be good for us. I really do. At least for this season. Obviously, we are leaving at the end of this season. West Brom will have to make do with him beyond that point. But I think he's going to be good. And um, I'm hoping... Obviously, he's going to come in and be our first choice. I'm hoping that he can really... Start to take us to the next level in terms of our player because I think wing backs are super important for our sort of system. And currently, right now, we're not getting the best out of them. Hopefully, with him with his well rounded attributes, we can start to see some better results. 
sort of make room for our new right wing back. We are having to move on one of our foreign players in the squad. And I think it's going to be Dav Lechen, the backup defensive midfielder. He's found his game time incredibly limited. And now with the signing of our new D mid, we can afford to definitely move him on. So I'll, I'll select the regular starters from this list and uh, we'll hopefully can improve away from the club. Right, so we've just played Southampton away from home on 1-3-1. The first half was pretty diabolical. We were playing in the same formation we've been playing for most of the season with the three at the back, the defensive midfielder, the two central midfielders, the wing backs and two strikers. I changed that half time, took the centre half out, put the attacking midfielder back in, back to the formation we started the season with that was struggling so much. And we come back and won 3 1. Roy Martin with a brace, Malungu with one. Both of our strikers getting involved in the play. I'm thinking maybe I'll make that change permanent. Well, we have had a battle for this win. 3 1 at home against Huddersfield. The game we completely dominated, but we were 1 0 down from the first minute. Andy Earl put them in front. The first half went by, we dominated the game, we just weren't getting the chances. Roy Martin then equalised five minutes after half time, and then Edward Sid with a brace in the 88th minute and the 92nd gave us the three points against our former side. And in our final game of today's episode was a 1 0 home win against fellow newly promoted side Leeds United, who actually sat in second position going into today's game. It is very, very tight at the top. Let's see where that sees us lying at the end of today's episode. We currently sit in fourth position, level on points with Chelsea in third and two points ahead of Leeds in fifth. Birmingham City currently sitting in second place, six points behind top of the table, Manchester City. Looking at the other end though, Barnsley and Nottingham Forest and Palace 13th, 14th and 15th and Huddersfield in 12th. Our former sides definitely grouping up at the uh, mid-table part there. But now that we're coming to the end, we're not likely to make any more signs. In fact, I'm not even looking. So, still got £33 million left. Still got £270,000 available in the wages. We haven't completely ruined West Brom's financial prospects with some of those signings. But, uh, yeah, I'm happy with the business we were able to do. Obviously, bringing in Atia, I think, is a good upgrade to our defence. Now we're only playing two centre-halves. So it'll probably be him and Ayo David who make their spots their own. Zoran Babic will no doubt, in my mind, be our starting defensive midfielder. Xavi, if he can keep himself fit, will be one of our starting strikers. And then, of course, Sebastian Drechel will be playing because I'm paying him 140 grand per week. But anyway, boys, looking forward to the next episode. It'll probably be the Palace-Liverpool game, both home games, at least winnable, at least in terms of Palace. I'm not so sure how Liverpool are doing this season. Ninth. So uh, maybe two winnable games, we never know. So I will see you there. If anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, get yourself leaving a like. Get yourself subscribed. Until next time, take it easy.